blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. my mind to Calvary, where Jesus
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow after us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. There's a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and take vengeance for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, take me not away. Know that for your sake I bear reproach. Your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart for I'm called by your name, O oh Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of revelers nor did I rejoice. I sat alone because your hand was upon me for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you, for I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeemed you from the grasp of the ruthless. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 26, be my judge, O Lord, for I have walked innocently. My trust has been in the Lord, therefore I shall not fall. Bless me, O Lord, and prove me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your loving kindness is ever before my eyes, and I will walk in your truth. I am not I have hated the company of the wicked and will not sit among the ungodly. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, and so will I go through the altar. That I may lift up the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. O shake not away my soul with the sinners, nor my lust life with the bloodthirsty. Whose hands are full of wickedness and their right hand full of pride. But as for me, I will walk innocently. O oh, deliver me and be merciful unto me. My foot stands firm. I will praise the Lord in the congregation. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do, do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, 
the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord. This shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on things of God, but on things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Forever, for whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with, the, with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. The Gospel of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day and this opportunity to meet in your name. We ask for your special blessing on Father Eric now as he speaks your words to us and gives us your message that you would open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to receive. And all this we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Although I've been the officiant in a fair amount of weddings over the past 23 years, I've gotten to the point where I will typically not go to the wedding reception. Wow. You see, when I did, I would usually be seated at a table with a collection of random wedding guests, all of whom felt obligated to tell me why they don't go to church. I mean, Rick, as a physicist, how many people come up to you and try and tell you why they don't believe in organized gravity? <laughs> or how many people, when they find out someone is a mechanic, say to them, well, the check engine light in my car has been on for a long time. I don't do anything about it. For, but for some reason, people feel like they have to say these things to a priest. Maybe. Now, <laughs> Maybe. But nevertheless, one of the most common reasons that I've heard for people not going to church is because the people at church are just a bunch of hypocrites. Now, in many respects, this is a cop-out. 
It's like having a broken leg and refusing to go to the hospital because there's just a bunch of sick people there. Or it's like saying, I don't want to go to the gym because some of those people are out of shape. So what I usually do is I tell these people that we always have room for another hypocrite among us. <laughs> but all snarkiness aside, this observation from people outside the church is not entirely unwarranted. When looking into the church, their expectation from the outside is that they will find people whose lives have been transformed radically by the gospel of Jesus Christ. But when they look into the church and instead see behavior that just reflects the behavior of the world, then they wonder why they should even bother with the effort. But their initial expectation of the church is not wrong or unrealistic. In fact, Paul himself lays out this same sort of expectation in our epistle reading today from Romans. Now, chapter 12 in Romans represents a pretty major shift in the letter. Up until now, it has been this theological treatise on things like sin and grace and justification. But like we talked about last week, information by itself is useless if we don't know what to do with it. And so Paul now seeks to, to address what we as believers are called to do with all of this heady theological information that he's just presented to us. And the transition from a theological to practical is marked in verse 1 of chapter 12 when Paul writes, I appeal to you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. It's interesting that after talking about grace and justification for the past 11 chapters, Paul begins this section by talking about sacrifice. However, he's putting a new spin on this very old concept. The sacrifice that Paul is now talking about is not intended to procure God's mercy, but rather it is seen as a result of God's mercy. Our response to God's grace and our resulting justification should be for us to offer our new and transformed lives back to God. Now, how many of you remember a TV show called The Brady Bunch? Most, yeah. Well, there's, this, there's this episode of The Brady Bunch where Bobby, the, the youngest son, saves his older brother's life by pushing him out of the way of a falling ladder. And as a result, Peter pledges to be worthy of the life that he has been given, and he devotes himself to Bobby as his slave for life. Now, of course, Bobby takes advantage of this new arrangement, and general hijinks ensues, but Peter's attitude is a great example of what Paul is talking about. Peter is so thankful for what Bobby has done that he dedicates his life back to Bobby. He's not trying to earn his brother's favor so that he might perhaps at some point save his life, but rather he is responding to something that Bobby has already done, to something that's already happened, to a gift that he's already been given. Of course, Jesus has done way more for us than push us out of the way of a falling ladder. <laughs> he's taken our sins upon himself, and he's died in our place so that we might be reconciled to God and become joint heirs of his kingdom. Now, certainly, that is worthy of us offering our full selves, our very lives, back to God. <clears throat> and when we do this, our lives and our minds are transformed by the Holy Spirit in such a way that we're able to not only know the will of God, but to follow it and do it as well. 
And Paul now goes on to tell his readers what these transformed lives look like. And it begins with humility. In verse 3, he writes, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Now, many people today think that humility is synonymous with self, self-deprecation and thinking poorly of oneself. But that's really not the case. Pastor Rick Warren once wrote that humility isn't thinking less of yourself. It's simply thinking of yourself less. Paul's not saying that we should think poorly of ourselves, but rather that we should have a realistic assessment of our abilities and contributions on behalf of the church as a whole. Perhaps it might be helpful to imagine a bicycle, which I do most of the time anyway. So imagine a bicycle which is made up of lots of different parts. There's the frame, the wheels, the tires, the crank, the pedals, the handlebars, and so on. Now, it might be tempting to look at a bike and think that the frame is the most important part of the bike. And while it's often the most expensive part of the bike, a bike frame by itself, it's pretty much useless. If I were to challenge the winner of the Tour de France this year to a bike race, and I just had my mountain bike, but all he had was his $10,000 carbon frame with nothing else on it. Who do you think's going to win that race? I'm going to win. I will be the new Tour de France champion. Because without everything else, that frame that he has, it's not going anywhere. Unless he carries it and tries to beat me running. <laughs> which he may do. But on the flip side, perhaps... The least expensive component on any bike is the chain. It's not a very glamorous piece of equipment, but without the chain, the rest of the bike doesn't work. The point Paul is making here is that when we consider the church, we should always see ourselves as part of a whole rather than as individuals that are more important than the rest. Now, it may be tempting to think that the priest is the most important part of the church service because we get to wear the fancy clothes. But did you know that a congregation is actually necessary for it to be a valid Eucharist? I cannot stand up here and just do the Eucharist all week and have it valid. People need to be here. Or we might think that the healing ministry is more important than the hospitality ministry until we realize that people will likely not come to be healed if they don't feel welcomed and accepted. Humility comes when we realize that we're all vital and important parts of the whole working together for the glory of God. At the same time, humility is about recognizing, as Paul says, the measure of faith that God has assigned to each of us. Going back to the bicycle analogy, some people are called to be frames and wheels, while others are called to be chains and spokes. Some of those parts may seem to be more glamorous than others, but they're all equally important in making the bike work properly. I had a young lady in a church once who was one of my best acolytes. Every time she was scheduled to carry the cross in the service, I knew that things would be done well, that nothing would get missed, that it would be very reverent and uplifting. She performed her duties with such grace that it really did lift the worship experience of everyone else who was there. However, she longed to do something that she felt was more important. And so she asked if she could sing with the music team. I told her that she would have to audition, and I gave her three songs to learn. And after a couple weeks, she came in for her audition, 
And it quickly became clear to me that musical leadership was not her gifting. (laughs) I'm not even sure if she was singing out of tune because I couldn't hear her over my guitar, which I was playing really quietly. But the sad thing was that she was so heartbroken that she quit serving as an acolyte. And as a result, the church was weakened because they missed seeing her in that role. How often do we neglect our own gifts because we want to do something for the church that seems more prestigious or more important? But the truth is that any time we use our unique gifts and abilities to build up the body of Christ, it is vitally important. Our goal should never be to raise ourselves up, but rather to do what is most beneficial for the church and for others. Well, Paul now drives his point home by returning to an an analogy that he used in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, which is the human body. He says, for as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we though many are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. So if you're a hand, be the best hand that you can be. If you're a nose, do all of those things that only noses can do. Paul makes the point in 1 Corinthians that all of these parts are necessary for the body to function properly. And if one part is missing or injured or sick, The entire body is affected. And nine years ago, I broke my collarbone. Now, this is a part of our bodies that we rarely think about. And I'm willing no one has ever said to any of you, wow, you have really nice collarbones. (laughs) But that unnoticed bone became very important to me when it got snapped in half. For the next few months, my entire life changed. I could no longer use my arm to pick up heavy objects. Putting on shirts became a challenge. My right arm started to hurt because I was using it so much more to compensate. And my back started to bother me because I had to sleep in a funny position. Even though a collarbone is different from an eye or a foot, The glory of the human body is how all of these parts work together for the good of the whole. Paul continues in verse 6, Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. He then proceeds to list some different gifts. Of course, this is not intended to be an exhaustive list of spiritual gifts, but rather an example of the variety of spiritual gifts that people bring with them to the church. He's being very clear that what is important is not so much the gift itself, but rather how that gift is used. We are to use our gifts for the good of the church rather than simply for our own glory. Now, last Sunday, we talked about the church and how it is more than just a place to go on Sunday morning, but rather it's a community to which we belong. We need to be constantly asking ourselves, how am I using my gift for the upbuilding of the community? Now, sometimes it's obvious. Of course, Masa, Leah, and Lynn lead our singing on Sunday mornings. Of course, Deacon Gail leads us in our outreach to the homeless, and Father Larry visits with people and brings them communion. But imagine if those were the only gifts being used at Christ the King. Imagine if there was nobody willing to clean the church or to bring birthday cake each month. Imagine if there was nobody to pray for you when you were sick or nobody called you when you were lonely. What would happen if people neglected to give financially to the work of the church or if nobody stepped up to lead our various Bible studies? Now, some gifts may seem big and bold, and others may seem small and insignificant. But when they're used for the glory of God and the good of the church, they are all vitally important. 
My hope is that when people come here for the first time, they won't see a room full of hypocrites, but rather a community of sinners saved by grace, working together out of our various gifts for the good of the whole. We then need to be sure that we're making room for those outside to come in and share their gifts and contribute as well. Let us be sure that we are always responding to God's saving grace by being a community of living sacrifices. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. I will pause after each bidding, and you may add your own petitions, either silently or aloud. For the peace of the whole world, and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Foley, our Archbishop, and Keith, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Today, in our San Diego Anglican Deanery, we pray especially for the people of St. Paul's Marietta and their rector, the Reverend Joseph Acton, and Christ Church Fallbrook and their rector, the Reverend Brian Capana. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Reverend Jessica, Russ and Heidi, David and Mary Beth, and Brian, Brian. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith in Pakistan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, and Steve, our mayor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the blessings of this life, we thank you, O oh Lord. We remember especially those who celebrate birthdays, and anniversaries this week. Please add your own thanksgiving for Zach and Lily's anniversary. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who travel this week, that they might be protected from every danger.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who do not believe in Christ, that the Holy Spirit may enlighten them through the gospel and bring them into the way of salvation. Please name any that are on your heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, today we pray especially for Anley, Ben, Casey, Chuck, Corinne, Jeff, JP, Leah, Emery and Sue, Gina, Laura, Laura Lee, Madeline, Sabrina, and Sebastian. Please add the names of anyone you wish to pray for today. Healing for Connor, for Carmen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving, let us pray. Please name any who have died that you wish to remember today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who sit in churches, and to me and all who labor and are persuaded to follow Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Saying, if you have faith and you say to this little shepherd, who Christ with your spirit. Peace be with you. Good preaching. Peace be with you. (laughs) Peace be with you. Peace, brother. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to Christ the King. It's nice to see everyone here this morning. Um, if you're new or visiting with us this morning, uh, we are so happy that you're here. If you'd like more information on who we are, what we do, we've got some connect cards in the pews. Just fill that out and you can give it to me after the service and we will be in touch. Please know that all baptized Christians who come to faith and repentance in Jesus Christ are invited to receive Holy Communion this morning. And now remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he he himself said, 
is more blessed to give than to receive. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. 
by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. and When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Give us all our trespasses as we forgive when sin again. No evil seeks to hide your faith. We fix our eyes on you by faith. Give us hope, give us faith, help us trust. 
Continuing on page 16, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning. Happy Sunday to everyone. Good Good to see everyone here today. It is uh, the first Sunday of the month, which means it is birthday and anniversary Sunday. Uh, So how many September birthdays do we have? Oh, all right. And then September anniversaries? (laughs) All right. Well, let us pray for our birthdays and our anniversaries. Let me see if I got my prayers here. So let's um, start with our birthdays. O God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let's pray for our anniversaries. O God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send your blessing upon these, your servants, as they begin another year that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, So just a couple things to bring to your attention The first is that uh, we're doing, there's going to be another Kairos weekend in October, and so we need cookies for the Kairos weekend. We need them delivered here to the church on Sunday, October 8th, and they need to be in clear Ziploc bags with 12 cookies each, no powdered sugar, and if there are nuts, it needs to be labeled as such, I would just say no nuts. So no nuts, no powdered sugar, um, cookies in bags, um, and then these will be taken to the Kairos Prison Ministry Weekend where the gospel is shared with prisoners, and this is a, I've said it before, this is a great way to get the men to come. Some people will say, well, they only come for the cookies, to which we say, that's why we bring the cookies, Um, because if they come for the cookies and they hear the gospel and their life is transformed, then praise God. Um, so, uh, so that's right. Yes. A vehicle of grace. What? Peanut butter cookies are okay. Okay. All right. Okay, um, <laughs> and then uh, the bishop will be here with us on October 29th, so everyone's got to come to church on the 29th, um, because the bishop will be, and everyone wear your Sunday best, uh, or a costume, that's right, wear your best. I, I, if we had Halloween Sunday, I would probably get in trouble, um, <laughs> What was that? <laughs> it, well, maybe if you came, as we could say, but the next Sunday is All Saints Sunday, so. Uh, jo- <laughs> okay. So anyway, just mark your calendar. Um, October 29th is our annual Episcopal visitation, so um, be sure to be here for that. And what? Uh, hold on, Nancy had... Uh, an announcement about Thursday Bible study. Um, Just wanted to announce we're starting a new book of the Bible on Thursday, the Zoom Bible study. We just finished Hosea, which was very interesting. And we're going to start James, which will be a whole different aspect. And we want to invite everybody to come. It's like a super group, and we'd love to see you all there. Bring your friends. Seven o'clock, and, and it's we, on Zoom, and, right? And it's one hour, and we stick to an hour. 
As we like to say, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Deacon Gail, did you have? Oh, you don't need me. Okay, well, you know, we talked about marriage anniversaries, but we do have a very special anniversary that happened yesterday. It was Father Eric's second year as our rector. I'd like to give... Yes, I have a card for you. My mama said I'd never last two years here. <laughs> hey, Mom, what? <laughs> um, we're having a special little celebration in the fellowship hall, so we're going to keep the door closed until Father Eric can come first to get first dibs. So just be patient and I'll hurry, hustle. and you'll hustle. hustle. But I would also like for us to pray for him. Do you want to anoint him? What do you think? <laughs> Anyone want to come up and lay hands upon this person, this wonderful person that's, that's stuck with us for two years? Yes, please. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this wonderful, wonderful priest who has, has guided us these last two years and for his lovely wife and for her patience as he spends so much time blessing us. We ask that you will help us as a congregation, support them both. Um, may we be always a blessing to him as he is a blessing to us. We ask that you strengthen him and you guide him in this third year and guide us. May we continually uh, seek out new, you know, all of the people that you have in mind for us to bring into our family. May we be open and grateful for all that you give to us. We again thank you for Father Eric, and we ask this all in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, speaking of having made two years the, and entering into the third year, we've just begun a program called Church Goals that it, it involves some coaching and teaching and marketing and all kinds of great stuff to, to help us continue to grow and, and sort of have the gospel reach outside our walls. So um, we're going to see some changes coming up. Um, one of the things they do is they help us to make our service a little more accessible to first-time visitors uh, and adding a little bit of explanation on the service. And so you'll start seeing little bits of that in the, the coming weeks. We'll also be having a um, basically a town hall meeting in a few weeks to talk about um, outreach and, and how we're going to accomplish that. So please stay tuned for that, but just know that um, we're going to see some exciting things coming up in the in the coming weeks. So I'm I'm excited to see what the Lord has in store for us. Uh, do we have any EMP testimonies? Ways we've engaged with our community, met the needs of others, or proclaimed the gospel in the past week? Sherry. Hi. Um, I mentioned before my husband and I help out. There's a church down in El Cajon that has a ministry to immigrant people. And we started, I guess, this summer or last spring or something, and it was mostly like random people or people from Iraq. And right now it's mostly people from Afghanistan. And, uh, you know, two years ago the U.S. left Afghanistan. Um, these are a lot of people who had helped the U.S. and they came here and uh, uh, most most of the people we see, they're young men with their families and children, and they don't speak English, and sometimes, especially the women, don't even write Afghani, much less English. Yeah. And so it, it's been interesting, and just that's what we've been doing Thursday nights. And so um, we've just been being there, being friendly, and, you know, some American-friendly face, so we haven't really <laughs> given them a hellfire brimstone sermon <laughs> because they wouldn't understand it anyway. <laughs> so that's what we've been doing. Oh, cool. Thank you, Jerry. Any others? Yeah. 
So a couple of years ago, I reached um, out. I had heard that there was a Moms in Prayer group at my elementary school, and I wanted to join. Well, when I reached out to join, I was told that there used to be a really active group, but they no longer had leadership. Would I like to be the leader instead? <laughs> so I, I took that role and um, have prayed for two years for another mom to come alongside and join me. <laughs> And in that period of time, there was another elementary school with a mom in a very similar position to me. So the two of us had been praying for our schools together, um, even though our kids aren't at the same school. Um, at any rate, I've now moved up to middle school and um, my prayer was answered because I really wanted to be able to pass the baton and not leave the elementary school with nobody. Um, a new TK mom reached out to me a week ago. And so, that's um, a, a, a way that I've engaged with her. I'm going to help her um, join into doing that and continue praying that that group grows. Thank you. All right, do we have one more? I used to be loud enough that nobody needed a mic with me. Um, as a recipient of the great love of Pai Master, Pai Kumash, thank you and we thank you for your prayers. Um, one of the things about being in the hospital several times of late, thank you for Father Eric visiting me, is you have a wonderful opportunity to share your faith and especially it was interesting, the nurses and aides that came when I was in isolation uh, were so open to hearing the word and having someone there that would share it. And that comes as thanksgiving to each of you as you pray for and please continue to pray for every night. I tried purposely. <laughs> I tried purposely to come late to not have that happen. <laughs> but my old buddy, um, we have a long road ahead. Emory also has Parkinson's, which is also a part can be a part of dementia, which is why he can't come. It's very difficult for him to transverse. So he's welcome to have anyone come and visit. Just call for the pens. We have a very roller coaster world these days. So if you would call first, we would love to see you. And he doesn't leave the house anymore. So, that being said, anyone that would like to come, we'd love for you to come and pray. And thank you for coming and giving us communion. And God bless all of <laughs> you. You are all amazing prayer warriors. Or I wouldn't be here today. All right, well, on that note, who would like to say, ask the blessing for our, our bountiful feast, which we are about to receive? <laughs> Get a good one. I thought they're all good. They're all good. But they're ones that are gooder than others. <laughs> are you a gooder one? <laughs> God, our Father, Lord, and Savior. Thank you for your love and favor. Bless this food and drink, we pray, and all who share it with us today. Amen. 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 All right, now let us stand and sing our closing hymn.
Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.